Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 123 of the CU Insight Experience. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Qs, the leading talent development solutions provider to the credit union industry. After listening to our show today, be sure to register for Qs' new online panel discussion series called Real Talk. You can register over at cues.org slash Real Talk. My name is Randy Smith. I'm one of the co-founders of cuinsight.com, and I'm lucky enough to have conversations with the amazing people who make credit unions great, and I get to bring them all to you. I get to pick their brains and see if we can't find a few nuggets that we can all learn from. My guest on today's show is Linda White. Linda is the president and CEO of Upward Credit Union in California. I've always enjoyed conversations with Linda when our paths crossed uh, at conferences around credit union land. Beyond being the CEO of her credit union, Linda has been active on many credit union movement boards. She's also a DE, so you know, you get a couple of us together. We spent time talking on the value of that as well. Uh, we talked a lot about growing her credit union in a uber competitive financial services market where, where she serves her membership. We talked also uh, about what has her excited about the future of her credit unions and credit unions in general. Spent a lot of time talking about Linda's career journey. She was so gracious to share those all those leadership lessons that she's picked up along the way. Some really cool conversations about you know leading and growing a team as well as you know board relations and, and those mentors around the industry and being a mentor as well. So with all that, we then wrapped it all up with some rapid fire questions as we always do. I, I enjoyed this conversation with Linda a ton. I am looking forward to, I get to actually see her in person here very soon at a, an event we'll both be attending. So that has me excited. But without further ado, I give you my conversation with Linda White. Enjoy. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for taking the time. It's actually a holiday for most in credit unions today while we're recording this, but I knew there were a ton of directions we could go. We've had conversations in the past, so I know this is going to be a ton of fun. So again, thank you. And I would like to just start with, if I remember correctly, you started as a teller. You're one of those amazing credit union stories, right? Like from teller to CEO that, that we hear from time to time. Anybody that's been on the show that's had that background, I always like to ask the question for the the person out there who maybe someday would like to sit in that CEO chair. Any any advice or hacks that you have for them? You know, I would say be okay to be uncomfortable. I think about all the times and all the things and all the doors that have been opened to me and where I've been shoved through, and I've been uncomfortable. <laughs> So I am, and I no shock to you or anybody that knows me, I'm an extrovert, but I am shy. So, you know, being, I've been in a lot of uncomfortable situations, always having an ally there that I knew that obviously they put me in that situation because they knew I could do it. And there's a lot of people that come to mind that have done that to me, but to be uncomfortable, it's okay. It's okay. So you, you talk about kind of being pushed through that door at times from allies, but I'm sure there were also times that you kind of stepped through as well and made yourself uncomfortable. <laughs> For sure. Well, so imagine, so one, one example, and there's many, but one example is going to an IT conference. A friend of mine said, I'm going to go to this cybersecurity conference. It was the first one put on by NASCIS. I mean, yeah, NASCIS. And I went okay. and I'm thinking, I'm the only CEO, there's two of us that are CEOs in a room full of IT people. That is like, if you run a small credit union CEO, you kind of wear a lot of hats, but you go to IT geeky. Yeah, not the same thing. Not the same. No. <laughs> I, I remember going once to uh, the CUNA Tech Council conference and Caroline Willard happened to be there also speaking from the Cornerstone League. And after a, there was like a, a kind of a party and you and I've been to quite a few credit union parties. This this was a different type of party. It was just kind of uh, boring. So we ended up going to see a Cirque du Soleil. It was in Vegas. So. <laughs> All right. So I, I get what you're saying about some of the tech conferences, the IT side. Yeah. Sitting at lunch and nobody's talking. Uh, right. Exactly. Yep. So you've grown Upward Credit Union quite a bit over the last few years. I was doing a little bit of homework for this show. So a couple different things. What has you excited going forward? you know, just asking that like three to five year. And like, is there any part of that success that you've had in growing the credit union that you could share with our listeners? Yeah, I think 
starting out at the credit union when it was 3 million with like two people to being right. able to add on pretty much every service and product that we have is pretty amazing. And now we're moving at like a rapid pace. And I think what gets me excited is to see what we can do at our size for our members. COVID didn't really affect us because we've done a lot of digital training with our members. And so we have no lobby traffic. So that gets me excited to kind of see what players are going to play nice with us and to continue down that journey for our members on what they need. Does the the digital adoption even pre-COVID, right? We've seen a lot of credit unions have to have that. Does your location, where your credit union is located, is, is that your membership base is maybe a little more tech forward than than others? I think naturally, because we are, yes, but most of our members are, we start out as a healthcare credit union and that is still, we we say we're a community credit union with a focus on healthcare. So we know that nurses and people in the hospital, they cannot go to their computer to to check in on home banking. They need their phone. They need to do something that's like right there for them. So I think the adoption has been, you know, they, they get it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something that let me go there because you did say you're you still have that you're a healthcare focused, but you're a community credit union as well. You're in a uber competitive area. I mean, across our whole industry, we have it's not just the big banks anymore, right? Like it's uh, the fintechs and the non traditional players. You know, um, how are you differentiating yourself at Upward to have that kind of growth and to to stay relevant? Quite honestly, yeah, yeah. Being in a competitive market, that's an understatement. We know that, you know, we can't be all things to all people. And our niche is to, you know, the little guy. Years ago at GAC, they had the little paper cutouts of the little guy. So we really take that to heart. And our employees get tons of training on empathy. And when they're working out and, and with any of our members to make sure that they remember what is the member going through. It, it kind of helps that I became a DE, you know, best class ever. I was gonna, I, I was gonna hope to work that in sometime. Anytime we could give the shout out to fellow DEs on the program. Yeah, yeah. And and so then what happened is, is so that you know, I've always it's in my blood. Is you know, I started out as credit in eighteen, and you know that's what I know. And back then, and even when I started at Upward, we were United Health, or actually we were a different name. Everybody that worked in the hospital came down to the credit union. And now we need to get that to where having a community charter allows us to not turn away people that are referred by people that love us. So like most credit unions are, I would think, 90% of our members come from referral. We now don't have to turn them away. And then the opportunities, what opportunities present themselves to us. So like I said, DE, we're now just starting into the iTunes lending arena. Now we have three other DEs besides myself, but they are all virtual. They all did virtual DE. It's funny how once there's a DE in the organization, it seems to spread. So I think we're up to three at CU Insight also since I went through, you know. So um, let me ask you this. This may just be a scratch my own itch, you know, in my head. You were well into your career when you went through DE. DE was something that I had always wanted to do too, but I just had a hard time fitting it in. And I was probably 10 years into CU Insight before I went, you know, through DE. There was a, a CEO who's now retired from Texas when in my class, and it was almost emotional, like how it brought kind of that purpose back going through it further into the career. Yes. You mentioned empathy and you kind of brought DE in right with that, your, your DE experience. When you came back from DE, did it motivate, change, refocus, remind you why credit unions are amazing? Like what was the, I guess, what's the experience for you? We, we were already doing the empathy training because we have an outsourced trainer that comes in or, or works with employees one-on-one. Coming back, you talk about emotional. I tell everybody I cried so much that week. I can't even begin to tell you. And I think it was because it reminded me of all those things that were just natural working at small credit unions. It really kind of really hit home. And you well into my career as an understatement. Um, I was at GAC one year and Lucy Ito introduced me to Lois and said, oh my gosh, you've got to meet. And then we were going to do it. And she says, we, you know, we don't have any spaces. There's a wait list. And I'm like, oh, and I couldn't wait for the wait list because I was engaging with Julie Ferguson to do some yeah, training yeah. with the credit union. So I was committing with Julie. And no sooner did I engage with Julie, Lois says I had an opening. 
Can you do it? And I'm like, no. So fast forward two years later, I'm at GAC again, and I'm at the Global Women's uh, Breakfast, and I'm sitting next to Chad. I'm like, oh, you know, and we started having the conversation. And I said, yeah, I figure at this point in my career, I'm probably less than five, 10 years from retirement. Why should I do it? And he goes, oh, no, no, no. You know, we need we need people that have been tenured. So I get in the taxi to go to the hill, and, you know, the person I was with says, just do it, do it. So I sent chat and email, which I thought went like this, but then I looked back at it and it, I didn't use these words, but it, I thought in my brain that it said, it's time to shit or get off the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he said, you're in. I have two spots you're in. And then people say, why, why would you do it this far into your career? And it was, it was life-changing. For me, not having worked directly in the credit union, it connected everything that I was doing in like the connection that I loved that like over building CU Insight right to the community that I was like, oh, this is why I like this place this so much, right? So it, it was amazing. So we'll link to DE in there and everybody should reach out to Chad and bug him and, and get in the next virtual one. So <laughs> one question that I was excited to ask, and you, you mentioned with wearing many hats, you know, at a small credit union over the past year and a half, two years now, we've all had to put out a lot of fires. How do you make sure to stay and make that space to stay strategic? Because you still have to, Obviously, run and look, you know, move the credit union forward. You can't just put everything on hold because there's a, you know, a fire to put out, I guess you could say. So. Well, some things did have to get put on hold, like site visits for business development. We, you know, I have a good team. You know, having been there for 37 years, I've, you know, had different people. Well, there was only three of us and now there's 17 of us to build a team of people. I'm so proud to say that all of the team gets that empathy is really priority number one. And our members are, as everybody should be, is priority number one. And, you know, just we did keep strategic. And it's really about at this point, we had to shift because the strategy was make sure we can remain strong as we had this influx of deposits coming in. And for us, you talk about switching digital, the members were very digitally engaged, but we did not have the ability to work from home. And within 48 hours, we had a board approved policy and Jason works with our IT company. Everybody's laptops that had laptops could be able to dial in from home so we could do that, like within 48 hours. Do you see that as being a change that in some way you keep once this is all over or? Absolutely. In fact, I'm on vacation. We talked about me just coming back from a road trip to New Jersey, which was super exciting. I did bring my laptop just in case I wanted to catch up on some Kula emails, which, you know, we can talk about later. And I did have a reason to have to log into the system and I could do it. I could do it like in a hotel in Omaha, Nebraska. That was a good spot. Yeah. I have never actually done the cross country drive. And so it was yeah. wonderful. Something else that we'll keep from having to flip is we do wellness workshops for our members and we were doing them in office before the pandemic. And we had just started doing them because because of DE, we now have a financial wellness person that's part of her job. But one of the things is that we decided well, we can't stop doing everything we're doing. Let's just take one of the wellness workshops virtual. And we realize, oh my gosh, so we will continue to keep them virtual because we have members that are in the hospital at lunch or they live too far to come in on their day off. So that was, there was a lot of good that has come out of it. That's fantastic. Uh, So I'm a big believer in you. You mentioned people that have helped you kind of in your career, you know, earlier in the beginning of this conversation. But, you know, that idea that we are kind of the, the, I guess a better way of putting it is the people that we choose to surround ourselves help shape who we are. And they obviously help in our career. So who does Linda surround herself with? And and how have they helped you out in this journey of yours? You know, I have professional people that that are always there. And then my friends, too, that keep me grounded to make sure I I don't want people to just uh uh-huh. I want them to not agree with me. And I want them to check me. And, you know, some people might say I have a strong personality and I, I would disagree in a lot of respects. Just don't be afraid to tell me I'm wrong. Being a part of CULA, which is the Credit Union Women's Leadership Alliance, that is a surrounding of female CEOs that are all going through the same thing that I'm going through. And, and you talk about respect and being able to check each other. It's, it's, it's amazing. 
so that's a newer organization for people out there, the listeners who who maybe haven't heard of it. You, can you give a little shout out there and a, we'll link to everything? And let me let me set you one up there. How about that? <laughs> so CULA, which is the Credit Union Women's Leadership Alliance, was the brainchild of Lily Newfarmer, who I'm sure you know. And two yep. years ago, 13 women were brought together as the founding members to just kind of have this like, do we need this? Is there a need? And here we are. We officially formed earlier this year and we have all of our credentials and board and it's pretty exciting. It's rapidly growing and we're getting ready to have our first annual meeting in early part of next year. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations Thank on you. that. And there are some amazing people involved in that with you. So I've <laughs> It is credits that are three hundred million dollars or less. So it's really that right. niche of female CEOs. That's fantastic. So, you know, we kind of mentioned it with the DE, but I'd like to kind of ask more directly on this one is that idea of keeping purpose constant, whether it's personally or professionally, it's not tough to find purpose in credit unions. But often we sometimes we can get away from it a little bit. Is there something that you do to make sure that you're living that kind of purpose driven life? like I said, professionally and personally, and how does that benefit your team and the, the credit union members? Yes, I will well, see purpose driven. Well, the drive across the country huh. to take a 79 year old and two dogs would tell me that's part of my purpose. I think I told somebody, I feel like I speak elder, you know, to, to be there for people that don't have somebody to be there for them. That That's kind of who I am. It, have you always been that way? Yeah. And it just, you know, whether it's dogs, you know, it's the puppies, dogs, whatever. I just, to be there for people that, because we don't know, have you seen the Chick-fil-A video? No. You've got to see the Chick-fil-A video. We watch, we, we run it every year at our staff training and it's really just people in there walking through their lives and it's so DE relatable. And then there's like little bubbles over all the people's heads because you don't know what's going on with that person. We will have to link to that in the show notes. I have not seen that actually. So, but how about with the credit union? You mentioned your team has grown quite a bit over the years. How do you make sure that as you're, you know, bringing in new uh, team members, that they're staying, like you're bringing in people that kind of fit the mission and are, are constant to that over their careers as well? We interview for culture fit, not for competency. Because we want the right people. And each person that's gone through DE, they're like, oh my gosh, now I know what you were talking about. And and then other people are curious as to what it is. And so everybody, you know, I have two VPs and two managers. And it's like, okay, who has somebody? Is it you, if it's not you, or somebody that you would like to go through the next DE class? And to be able to do that. Because it's kind of like mom. I'm mom. Well, you hear from mom, hear from somebody else. And so everybody gets that. And so one of the things that, in fact, the other day Chad did it on something, but to have employees take a deep breath, take a deep breath and remembering what's yeah. going on inside, because I get stressed out and, and somebody checks me and they're like, um, Linda, you were like a little flipped out. And just, so sometimes I'll do, we do staff meetings still on teams, even though we're all in the office, we're not yeah. in the office. So I'll just tell everybody, so I want everybody to take a deep breath and breathe out. And then I'll check them. Like, I didn't see everybody do it. Let's try it again. Through COVID, we've gone, like I said, virtual with that. It's like, we'll do things like, what What are you watching on Netflix? Or, you know, any good recipes? And just to just have a humanistic part. We have a job to do. We have regulars to answer to. Yep. But what are we doing to change our members' lives financially? Absolutely. A big picture question that I've asked since the beginning of this show. Is there something that you think credit unions need to do better to stay relevant with, with how competitive it is out there? Ask your members what they need. And it doesn't need to be a survey. I'm not a fan of big, expensive surveys. But y- your tellers are seeing what members are doing. Your call centers know what they're doing. Find out. That's how you. That's how we decided that we need to start do ITIN lending, having people coming in that were paying 29%. And they're like, oh, well, I don't have a social security number. And so it's like, okay, let's flip this upside down. And, you know, what do, what do they need? <laughs> Listen to the people at the front that are talking to the members. It's so funny you say that Jill was doing a training that I could overhear her earlier today and, you know, a whole staff training. And she said many times the frontline staff knows what's going on more than anybody else in the community, the membership. You know, they're, they're hearing the worries, right? Like, I, let me ask you, when, when it came to something like taking, say, your tellers hearing that 
there are members that need lending products, but they don't have the social security. So you go find the I-10 program. Was that something that your board was just instantly on board with? Or was it something that you as a CEO had to, to, to move them along, you know, for the other folks maybe who haven't had the board experience that you have? You know, our board is pretty awesome. They are very diverse. And I have to tell you, it wasn't our sell at all. In fact, financial well-being has been an initiative from the board for over five years. Uh-huh. Yeah. A- any hacks for that either new CEO or future CEO on board relations? That thing that maybe somebody told you when you first became a CEO that you're like, that was smart. That's true. I tell everybody, you know, if you don't have board relationships, then just forget it. Everything else you can work and fumble along. The board relations is super critical. We actually had uh, one of our power hours on board relations to hear the good and the bad and the ugly. Make sure you find an ally, find somebody you know, whether somebody in another credit union, small credit union, large credit union, don't be afraid of a large credit union. It doesn't mean they want to merge you. You can always say no. Don't be bullied. Don't be bulldozed. Have partners. The board relations is just so important. Just have, and if you don't have the whole board, find that one person to help you work through what that looks like. Talking about, you know, DEI, that was one of my employees' um, DEI projects was to have a DEI initiative. And so we've okay. gone through that and somebody's like, it's not just a piece of paper. We are having the board come to us now and kind of go, well, what about um, an employee resource group? <laughs> We are That's an employee awesome. resource group. We're seven You are people. one, right? We are. <laughs> so they're, they're on board. They are, they are so on yeah. board. They're very diverse and um, very forward thinking. Oh, that's very cool. I'd like to move on to your career journey a little bit. We've kind of touched on it around, but do you remember that moment where you just were like, credit unions, I think I can make a career in this because, you know, most of us didn't grow up saying someday I want a credit union. I had some hurdles. I had some hurdles. I was actually hired. I was working at a parking garage and passport studio across from the federal building in San Francisco. And that was my friend's mother had it and she taught me how to do the 10 key and I was 17. And then the manager of the credit union in the federal building came over one day and said, oh, "Oh, we have an opening for a receptionist. Do you want to come over and apply? And the next thing I know, I was hired and I I was hired as a teller, not a receptionist. And it was the day of their conversion. And it was just getting to be with people and helping members was just, it was, I was bit by the bug. I don't know how else to say it. And I I mean, I had some hiccups. There was, there was a time when I almost didn't have that job because back then we, every, it was very cash heavy. Remember there was no checking accounts. There was no debit cards. There was nothing. And it was lines out the door and, you know, and somebody did a quick one on me and I was short a hundred dollars and I was short a hundred dollars twice in three months. And the treasurer of the board was an IRS auditor and told the manager that I needed to be suspended for a week without pay. And I had to pay the money back. Talk about devastation. I remember going to my brother and crying. I was 18 years old. And he's like, basically pick up your big girl booties and go back. Otherwise they're going to think you took the money. If I hadn't gone back, I wouldn't be where I am today, Randy. Absolutely. All right. Oh, wow. I was promoted within. And just once I, I learned everything, everything there, found an embezzlement from a former employee. And it just, it just helping members and just the people you're with. And then the chapters and the whole credit world back then, my whole world was a chapter, the credit in a chapter, but you know, what, what did a young Linda want to be when she grew up? I want to be a teacher. And I tell people all the time, there's a lot of times I am a teacher. I was just thinking that in my head. I'm sure you're teaching financial wellness quite a bit. Well, I'm so. teaching employees and I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and what was the inspiration to become the president and CEO of Upward Credit Union? Now I know that wasn't the name then, but the first time around, I, my former boss, I was like, "I'm, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this." And then by the time he was ready to move on, I was like, "Don't let the door hit you on the way out." I was ready. I went to CUNY Management School, and I was that prepared me to, for all that, like looking at it. Cause you know, you don't have to know everything when you take the job, 
I, I don't know if it's if it's me or if it's the woman or I, I don't know. But you get all that base work going back into the Credian's history and having to go forward into the Credian history to kind of going, I can do this. I, I know, I know this. And, and no matter yeah. what yeah. you did in the Credian, the minute you're in the seat of a CEO, it, forget the, the best advice I got from somebody was no matter what you did, just remember once you're in that seat, you don't know anything. Let me ask you this because I'd love your thoughts on this. You know, often I, I remember talking to a recruiter friend of mine once and he was saying that like the CEO chair is actually the toughest to place. And the reason why is because like you could be a great number two, you could be a great person that, you know, the management team. And then I've heard others people say that the CEO job can be lonely at time, right? You've got your board above you. You've got like your, your team that you're responsible for as well. Um, and then the other one that I've heard like over and over when talking to CEOs on the show is that idea of, you know, many people who got there are fairly kind of go-getters, A-type personality, and then to have to be able to delegate in you're not necessarily supposed to do everything, right? Like you need to have a great team, like you've mentioned. Is there, for that, maybe that new CEO again, or that person who wants to be, is there you know, that piece of advice that you would give on that transition from being part of the team to the leader of the team? How about that? Yeah, find, finding a mentor, you know, a, a mentor, an ally, a peer that's going to help you kind of figure it out. And that's one of the things I really like about Kula is we have yeah. members that have been CEOs for two months and all of a sudden, you know, one day the CEO wasn't there and they were plucked into the position and now they're managing their, what, who are their peers for a long period of time. Absolutely. Also, I'm very, you know, transparent. I used to tell people, or I tell people, I used to go home and cry. In the first three months, it was like, what do I do? And then I thought, I don't need to know how to do everything. I just didn't know who to yeah. go ask that I can trust. Absolutely. That is a really cool thing about that organization because now there's just hundreds or other folks, right? Like that people know they can reach out to and uh, leverage. I mean, that's one thing about credit unions. You know, it. people are so willing to help and share, you know, so <laughs> their experiences. It's, it's the whole purpose of this, this podcast, right? <laughs> so <laughs> has the inspiration changed at all, you know, since you've been in the, the CEO chair? Yes, I would say the inspiration now. And I tell people at this point in my career, it's to pay it forward. You know, the, uh, so the inspiration is to back to teaching. So instead of teaching a member how to use a product or service or teaching an employee how to use, do something to help a member, it's now helping to teach people, you know, how to, I'm not going to say make the same mistakes, but what to look for, how to know to look for it. Oh, so for example, and it's it's a size thing on credit unions. It's like, I know now I don't get all of these things approved by my board. It's embedded in my budget. But if you're a new CEO, how do you know what you should maybe get approved? How do you know? Absolutely right? What to ask for, what not, you know, and it's like with regulators. I'm a huge advocate. I would love to train people all the time, know how to push back. They have a job to do, but so do you. I had to tell a regular one time and, you know, we've had lean times over the years and they, they were like, well, we're really worried about this. I said, you know, you have a job to do and you have a job to do. Yeah. I got state and federal regulators in there. I said, I have 4,500 members to answer to. So I'm not really worried about you. Do your report. I'll yeah. take care of it. But I can go to sleep at night because I know I'm taking care of my members. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Is there something your team has heard you say so many times they can uh, finish your sentence? Yeah, I don't know if this is just because since I became a DE or if it was before, but we are huge about what can we do. And the emphasis is always on different words. It's what can we do? What can we do? So it depends on the situation, but they, I say that all the time. What can we do? I think we might know the name uh, to this episode. Is, is there a myth about being a great leader that you think is just dead wrong and you wish you'd never heard again? Hmm. About being a great leader. You talked about being lonely at the top. I disagree. I don't no. think it's lonely at the top. It's, it's only lonely oh, if you want to make it lonely. If you just think you have to know it all, ask somebody. I think that's the the voice of a a true extrovert, right? So yeah. that, that shy part of you that that that, that kind of surprised me. I'll, I'll just be honest. So <laughs> a shy extrovert. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of like an outgoing introvert. See, there you go. You're not shy, but you're an introvert. 
<laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so outside of credit unions, what does Linda do to recharge? What does that work-life integration look like to you when you're not driving across the country? My, you know, thankfully, my husband is, he's hes very much an adventurer. I, I grew up in the city and he's always been like a camper. So we um, go, we have property up near Mount Shasta. So we go out into the forest wow. and listen to the birds and listen, is that an acorn dropping or a leaf? waffling through the wind. So to really do that and take, I, I have to thank him because like I said, I, I don't decompress, but you know, Uh I want to, I'm in a relationship, I'm in a marriage, we're equal. And so we really offset each other. So I will, I'm going to say cave to that. But then once I'm there, I'm like, I need this. I really need this. So to be with nature. I, I don't know if you're like this too, but Jill and I talk about it all the time. Like, and you know, we travel, but like for us to decompress, we have to get away. Like if we're, especially working from home, right? Like we're, you can just constantly be on. So we like physically need to leave the house to, <laughs> you know, or the office or whatever. It, you know, I mean, driving is to me really relaxing. That's fantastic. So it wouldn't be the CU Insight Experience podcast without some rapid fire questions. Okay, I'm ready. The questions are rapid, but your answers do not have to be. Is there something that you said no to in life that you're sure glad you did? And there's not a lot I say no to, which is why I I am on 9,000 committees. I actually did say no to pursuing a job that I was headhunted for. I don't know if I was the only one that was headhunted for it, but... I said no, because, well, because I've been here for so long and I love my job. Why would I go? Because I'm, I don't need to be running the next thing or doing, we're not complacent. We are not complacent at all at Upward and to be able to, so I'm glad I said no to that opportunity. Has there been a recent purchase that you've made that you did not know you needed and now you can't live without? Maybe that, that COVID purchase of Pelotons and puppies or... Well, we, we didn't purchase a thing, but we had our backyard. I was tired of looking out the window at the, cause we have dogs and it's like dirt and weeds. I'm like, I'm done. So I hired a landscaper and it's like, just ripped it out. You know, we don't, it's, we're in daily city. It's foggy. We're outside of San Francisco. So it's not pools. We don't have all the space that you all have. We don't have, it's nothing like that, but I can look out there and I've got lights and a fire pit and. And I'm very happy and calm every time I look out the window. You've made yourself a little oasis. Yes. Back, eh? So so what was a young Linda like in high school? And did you get in any memorable trouble that you're willing to share? I did get in some memorable trouble. I was not... Um, can you compete with Diana Dykstra's Grand no, Theft Auto? No, ding that, Diana. No, well, <laughs> Nobody can. <laughs> I didn't steal a car, but I did something really stupid. I was out with a friend and we were going to her brothers and sister-in-laws up somewhere in the city and parking's awful and it was late and we were teenagers and i found a parking place and i said do you think it's okay there and she goes oh yeah yeah it's okay it's okay and we went inside and we were there probably till i don't know one two in the morning and we went to go leave and my tire was flat i think all my tires were flat i'm like oh my god what we don't know so i called my dad and he was like figure it out get home yourself they wouldn't come get us they wouldn't help us so back then the buses weren't running. There was no Uber. So we had to wait till the buses were running right. and to walk and take a bus home. What had happened was we had parked to the top of the driveway that would go down to all the apartments, parking spaces. So nobody could drive down okay. and get to their carport. So somebody got mad and freaking took the air out of my tires. Like just all your tires. <laughs> there you go. And in, in high school, what were you like? I was I wasn't in any of the clubs. I was I was very overweight in high school. I was kind of shy. Yeah. And yeah, okay. and yeah. thank you, Weight Watchers. So I didn't really, I graduated early. I graduated six months early. It's just, it wasn't my thing. Okay. okay. Very cool. You were, I was you were a ready good student, though. So. I was a good student. Yeah. It had to be if you graduated early, right? So anything you're reading right now? And is there that book that you've recommended or gifted over the course of your career that you just think everybody should read? I'm not a big reader, to be honest with you. When I was I was just in Spokane, I picked up a book of stories, like little, you know, because I don't I can't commit to a book. I'm like, I'm I'm a tactile person. Let me watch, see. Yeah. But a book that was gifted to me that I do recommend often was the ideal team player. I was having an employee situation and I was um, 
talking to one of my my sister girlfriend CEOs and she says, okay, I'm tired of hearing about this situation. You're taking this book home. You're reading this book and I'm telling you, boy, it, it worked. It worked. It, it was the right time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the random question. What's the, the greatest album of all time? Oh, you know, growing up, I have to tell you, my first album was Michael Jackson. The Jackson 5 ABC was like my first album and I loved it. As an adult, it's like I literally, you know, I love musicals. And it's kind of, it's kind of tough. Would I say, you know, The Greatest Showman, that is my plane movie. If I'm on a plane that's got that movie, yeah. it can lull me to sleep. So warm. Yeah. That and Hamilton, but Greatest Showman, I could listen to on loop. That's a, that's a fantastic one. That's for sure. <laughs> Watch the, the, the movie yeah. myself. So there's a question. Yeah, I know you listen to the show, but there's a question I didn't send you in advance. Oh, it, oh. When you hear the word success, <sighs> Who is the first person that comes to mind? There's a lot. I'm going to say Sue Mitchell. Tell me more. I, that's a great answer, but tell me, tell me why. I've heard of her story. I've heard her story, you know, as a young pregnant mom and just all the adversity that she had to go through, but just what she's done with her career. What she's done with yeah. her career, not only her career, but she's done for other people's careers. So when I talk about people that pushed me through a door and it's like, didn't know, I, I say this all the time and she's going to listen to this and shake her head and say, oh, Linda, but she's the person that I, cause I've known Sue for, I, I first met her when I was in community management school. I didn't really know her, but she was an instructor. But then the yep. first year I was a CEO, she had a group uh, that she had for CEOs and I used her marketing company back then, but she is the person that she'll take spaghetti and throw it at the wall and say, here you go, Linda, you go do it. And then I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? So it's because of her that I'm a co-leader of the first Global Women's Leadership Network Sister Society. You know, she's a great mom. She's just an amazing woman. And she's done so much uh, with her life. And I'm happy to call her a friend and a mentor. Uh, that is beautiful. And we will... Uh... <laughs> in the show notes link to her episode on the show so people can go back and listen to that one after uh, <laughs> after they're done with us here so uh, thank you again so much linda for being on the time and on vacation even taking your time out of your day um my last question for you do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share or asks of our listeners you know just keep doing you know what's in your heart be passionate about what you do and do it remember the member walk in their shoes I love it. That is the perfect way to wrap this up. I, thank you again. We will link to everything we talked about today in the show notes. If people have more questions of you, they want to reach out. What's your poison? Email, LinkedIn, Twitter? I'm on LinkedIn. Not that much, but I, I am on LinkedIn. I'm not a Twitter. <laughs> That's not my thing. I'm not a Twitter. Awesome. We will send people over. We won't send them to Twitter, then, but have a great day, my friend. Be well, and thank you again. Thank you, and I am looking forward to seeing you, hopefully in person soon. I hope so, too. I am ready. Yeah. GAC, right? Yes. So, have a great day, my friend. Talk to you soon. Before we go, I would like to thank you for being you and listening today. We couldn't get to have this much fun doing what we do without you, so thank you. Uh, once again, thank you to Linda for, for taking the time out of her day to be on the show and sharing all those lessons we just heard with all of us. Uh, she was so gracious to, to talk about so many different things. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Cues. Don't forget to head uh, on over to cues.org slash realtalk to register register for their new online panel discussion series. That is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to those. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, also, subscribe to the CU Insight experience on your favorite podcast player. So Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen, we're there. And check out the CU Insight experience podcast book list to find your next read from the guests on our show. Thank you all again for listening. Have a great day, and be well, friends. Be well, friends.